Ah, good. Now you understand the basics, we can begin in earnest. Your hero is returned to his beginning items. Our decks are reset. Welcome to the cabinet, home of the members of my court. Ah, there's an endless mode. Can't do it yet, it's locked, but I, I guess that would let it make that make it so that I can keep going forever and ever and ever. You just see how long you can go without dying. And I have the expansion, which is probably these over here, or maybe those are just the hard ones you get later. He said 12, didn't he? I think he said 12. And if that's the case, maybe the green ones are the originals and these ones are DLC or something, but I don't know for sure. We'll check it out. The Jack of Skulls. Three times two of skulls, three supplies. Um, don't really know what that means that well. I... <laughs> Let's just do it. for you to face my undead army. Meet the Jack of Skulls. Would you like to use a recommended equipment and encounter deck? Yes. Your decks have been updated. Alright. I figured I might as well just let it do a recommendation, but I'll still look at them. Alright. So, are these the equipped ones? And these are... Yeah, so down here is my deck, and this is... Okay. The, so the top is all the cards I have available in the entire game, and the bottom is all the cards I have in my deck right now. For basic randomization purposes, you have a minimum number of cards you have to include, which in this case is 12. So how do I... There we go, inspect. Desperate measures. This card is new, and thus its contents are unknown. Oh. So if it's a new card, I don't know what it does, so I don't even need to look at it. So then, there's actually no reason to look at my cards right now, because it's just a bunch of question mark things. Oh, that's new. I mean, that's something I get to, I get to know the definition of. Explorer's Helmet. Reveals stare encounter upon entering a level, and grants a gold bonus for revealing every encounter on a level. Okay, so if you do every encounter on the entire floor that, uh, while avoiding the stairs, you get bonus gold. Healing Cap. Any healing the player receives is doubled. Neat. It's rare. Uh, healing caps are rare to find. Rarer still is the adventurer who lives long enough to use one to its full potential. Damocles. That's what we saw at the store. During combat, press right bumper to throw eight uh, knives in eight cardinal directions. The artifact was forged to teach mortals the lesson about power and peril. Mercenary contract. It's new. We don't know what it does. I assume it lets you uh, have an ally. Be almost weird if it didn't, right? The important thing is I have a bunch of equipment to go through. Let's see... Is this an encounter deck? Oh, it's a character deck? Uh, welcome to the wild card update for Hand of Fate. This update adds different fates that you can select in order to change the way the game plays. Each fate provides different modifiers for play. So this is the expan part of the expansion then. The Apprentice is easy mode. So he's stronger in combat, enemies are weaker, some achievements cannot be unlocked. Yeah, I don't really have any attention to do that. Uh, adventurer. The adventurer has no specific upgrades or rule changes. The Warlord. Soldiers training. Ish. Shadow agent. Nomad. Iron... Iron Hunger. I thought I said Iron Hugger. <laughs> Curse of the Lion Prince. Explorer's Gift. Merchant Guard. Hoarder's Desire. Monk. Alright, let, let's go through these. Why not? I'm curious. So this is a hard mode. Players m Player moves and attacks faster in combat. Enemies move and attack faster and inflict more damage. So basically, it's like, it, this is the mode for you, someone who thinks the game's moving too slowly. So the game just moves faster in general for everyone. <laughs> uh, for you and them. Your counter, your counter attacks do more damage. Bandits have now throwing weapons. That's actually neat. So enemies can attack you with throwing weapons, but your counterattacks are more effective. So if you're already using them a lot, then you get you get more benefit for them. But of course, the faster enemies means that you have to worry about them hitting you sooner. But uh, that could be an appealing mode. Soldiers training. Uh, unlucky chance card effects are more difficult. I, I wonder if that makes every. I wonder if that makes them 50-50 instead of 75% success chances. Even though I have a hundred percent failure rate so far. Uh, Trained for combat. They, uh, you do increased damage as your combo meter rises. Neat. Shadow Agent. He's all, look out. He's very happy, isn't he? <laughs> uh, chance card events are easier. 
How did that get easier than 75%? Maybe the maybe the variable changes from, from challenge to challenge. Uh, combo multipliers are reduced. Huh. So you make the you make challenges e easier, but you get reduced combo bonuses. Whoa. Nomad, no inventory, cannot carry extra equipment. Equipment that would normally go to your inventory is automatically sold. It's if it's automatically sold, that's kind of cool because it means you don't have to go to a vendor to sell it, which means you can have the gold immediately for scenarios like that goblin that wanted twenty that I could have given twenty gold to potentially. Uh, in that particular case, it would have been a bad idea, but in other situations where money would come in handy, immediately having money is good. But you better not be planning on pivoting your equipment around at all. Iron hunger. Discarded equipment ga uh, grants iron ore, a special food that is all that this fate can consume. Oh goodness. <laughs> so instead of having normal food supplies, he has to throw away equipment to turn into iron ore to eat it. Curse of the Lion Prince. Uh, max health. Starts with a low max health, but increases with each defeated enemy up to a maximum of 200. So he starts off with less health and then gains more as he fights. Much like some of the uh, the Lich, I want to say, or something like that from uh, Rogue Legacy. There was a there was a class in Rogue Legacy that starts off super weak and and almost useless. But then the more you play them, uh, the more you play them, the better you go. Oh, I've been missing something here. Let's go back. Sorry, I just realized that there's. I thought they were. I thought the bottom of the screen was adding new cards uh, to the deck. That were, I thought it was just saying it was adding the class to the deck, but it's adding other stuff. So gain food and gold, but then lose. Uh, so this. So this. These are changes to your chances here. If you have the warlord deck, there's rumors of a temple to a long forgotten god, lead to a desolate wasteland. But you gain food and gold. Or you can gain food and gold from supply to cards, but you can also lose. You can draw a supply card that gives you thir minus 30% gold. Soldier's training. You arrive outside the barracks where you're approached by a sword liege of Duke's army. Shadow agent has... You are summoned to a secret meeting. Okay, for the Merchant's Guild. Nomad's Desert. You're inexplicably uh, drawn towards a bleak and unforgiving desert. Drawn by a powerful desire to find something that was once lost. Iron Hunger gives you Iron Hunger 1. Strange in a wooden uh, hut, resting precariously close to the edge of a ravine. You meet an eccentric old man who seems polite to meet you. And you can draw an extra equipment from the armory. And Cursed Lion Prince, Test of Pride 1. Despite having rested in safety, you're suddenly awoken, surrounded by pr the, the Pride Council, the eldest of your kin who lead, a, uh, who lead all of you towards reclaiming this land from the beasts. So other members of your crew show up. Oh, he's not a lion, man. He's wearing a mask. I can see his beard sticking out through the mat. I think I can see his beard and sticking out through the mouth that's gaping open. All right, moving forward now. Explorer's Gift. You can't wear heavy armor, but moving over completed encounter cards costs no food. That's pretty cool. Uh, that'd be a good. That'd be a good thing to match with the uh, Explorer's Helm itself. Uh, Lost Island. To start uh, the preparations of your trip. Uh, to find the lost island, you need to put up some gold for supplies and equipment. Okay. Merchant's Guard. Reveal merchants on the map? That's neat. Uh, leaving a level with ambushes unencountered causes you to be cursed. Uh, shops always offer reduced prices. Uh, you will always be ambushed at the, at the tinker shop and jeweler. So now if you go to a, if you go to any shop, you have to fight because you're a merchant guard. And there's a merchants in distress thing where they're in trouble. Hoarder's desire. Uh, the more uh, spare equipment in your hoard, the more health you have. You do more damage when you have more spare equipment. So just collecting a bunch of stuff makes you stronger. Treasure trove. While exploring some caves, you get a faint sense that there's more here than meets the eye. You have no way to know what. And finally, monk. Gold gain. Oh. So you can't get gold, basically, because when you draw a gold card, nothing happens. But you are rewarded for slaying undead. Holy Quest. The warrior monks have always protected the Tower of Rodero from the undead scourge that surrounds it. Since the arrival of the New Blood Royal Family, the tower has been under renewed and almost constant attack. I feel like I've got to play some of these cards while we're playing this, just because they seem to have interesting things to throw at them. I'm going to start with Nomad. I like the auto-sell 
option as a new player. Every step you take consumes food, but you will also heal as you proceed. As we proceed forward, I'll learn why that's a bad idea. <laughs> so there's one encounter thing that's not on the deck right now called Dead Man's Gorge. While crossing an ancient rope bridge of, the, of Dead Man's Gorge, you hear sounds of movement from below. It's an ambush! Otherwise we have... Local peasant and other stuff that we can't look at because they're all new. A lot of new encounters. Ambush! Why wouldn't I just add this for the sake of it? High variety of stuff happening. Watch me find out that Dead Man's Gorge is absolutely brutal and we can't deal with it. Too many cards. Oh, you, it has to be exactly 12. I could remove the normal ambush. There we go. Now we got a special ambush. Okay. It's common to have a minimum number of cards because if you only had one card in each deck, then you always know what you're going to draw and you can make it unfair in your advantage. But, uh... It's uncommon to have a mac uh, the maximum and minimum be the same number. Okay. The Jack of Skulls. New content awaits you. Yeah. It will be awarded when you complete your run. I will add my own cards to the deck. How boring life would be without a little spice. So even if I make my own decks, he still throws cards in there too. You can see the little, the glowing green and purple cards in there, where all the white ones are mine. You play for life and death. Prepare yourself. Mr. Lionel! Your provisions are running low. Can you press on? I have two food. That's a tough start. Okay, that's different from the last one. I assume I lose health every turn otherwise, if I run out of food. While enjoying your evening meal, local tavern, strange old man takes seat next to yours. He taps blah blah blah, pull this guy's as human, same description as before. I'll conjure something to your heart's desire. Should I try this again to see if it still happens the same way, or is his response? I'm wondering if what he does is random or always the same, so let's ask him what he needs. Need? I need to help you. There you go, old bean. Yeah, it's a shield again. Yeah, and he asks me about his son again, so it's the same encounter. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's not RNG, because... Uh, getting the same result twice does not necessarily guarantee that it's always going to be the same result, so we'll see. So I have Reflect Encounter again, and every third encounter does not consume food. Press B button to shield bash target, stunning it. So I've got reduced food consumption from a shield. Do I eat the shield? That's alarming. And then he, steal he steals my onion again. Up! We found the stairs. Downwards, if you dare. I could avoid taking the stairs, but I'm running low on food, and that's alarming. But I, but I also kind of don't want to skip to the next floor immediately. I'm gonna turn back and keep exploring. Twisted Canyon. That it lives in every game. That initial moment where things begin. I have worked on these cards all my days, and the canyon has been there from the outset. When you're asking for food, uh, seeing a dead canyon with skeletons not very encouraging. <laughs> you see a weapon glinting. Let's try it. Let's not screw it up this time. I'm gonna screw it up again. Second from the left. Yeah! Very carefully make your way to the bottom of the canyon. You retrieve the weapon from the ancient corpse. Desperate measures. 32 damage. Uh, this base inflicts more damage the lower the health of the wielder is. Oh. Holy. Equipment with this trait strikes fear into the cold hearts of the undead. They will sustain more damage and may not be resurrected around such holy relics. Hopefully we fight undead then. I think I'm going to be selling the old, yeah. Really? Is that what you're going to do? Don't be stupid. You're being sarcastic. Silly. It's clearly a better weapon. Oh, look, I've got the mask on. Did I get a... That's the nomadic helm, as I have a little weird... Being a nomad means you've got, like, a Mask of Zorro thing going on. It also looks... It's so big compared to his face. They would have been better off making an alternate texture for his head that has the mask on it, because having it show up as a physical object makes it look so huge, like it's a giant, like, cyclops visor. Alright, so I've got the nomad helm. Less damage from starvation while the player has no unequipped items. 
while the player has no unequipped items. Can you have unequipped items? I thought I had to sell everything immediately. So, I take less damage from starvation. I have a shield that makes me not consume food every third encounter. And that's about it, really. But that'll hopefully help, because I'm out of food. Let's keep exploring. We'll learn how much health damage I take from, uh, from starvation soon. The Maiden! Given how rarely one encounters the folk, you are fortunate indeed to meet Merith again. Or perhaps we are merely cycling around the wheel and dipping into the same memories time and time again. I think it's reasonable to say let's we need food this time. One day in the shady forest, she stops to greet you, blah blah blah. Supplies! Oh. Oh, two food cards. I thought she was going to draw two cards, and I was worried. The boot, the bread will sustain you for many days. Five food! One of my cards. A small benefit. I will not be so graceful for long. Yeah, you can tell it's his because it's purple. Anything that's not white is his card. Ah, uh, well. I'm sure you are grateful for that. I mean, less so. Well, we have six food now. That's a start. Alright. Many enchanted weapons have powerful abilities that can turn the tide of battle, but only if their wielder remembers to use them. Farewell, mortal. She gives you free supplies and tips. Well, it's a good thing I didn't just leave immediately. I managed to not starve, get more food, and get a weapon. Now let's squander it. <laughs> Your journey is well begun. This is what I was looking for. You show some aptitude for the game. Perhaps this will not be as boring as I thought. What's it gonna be? It's the new river card. Running water protects against many things in myth. Generally, though, it's just a pain to get past. Is it just gonna cost me more food? There's a token in it for you if you win. Oh, I like tokens. So he doesn't always wait for the boss for that. He throws in tokens when you encounter certain encounters. Oh, it's probably because there's a sun icon on it. So if you play a card with a sun icon on it, then if you succeed at the encounter, you probably unlock more content. Which is probably the primary incentive for you to u include those in your deck in the first place, because a lot of these negative effects are just bad for you, technically. But uh, if they show up and you succeed at them, then you get the you get content. All right, your path is blocked by a river. The water is clear, but fast flowing. I can turn back or try to cross. Let's try to cross. You get success, success, huge success. Or not so much. I just got success. Your light armor makes the crossing relatively easy. You reach the other side, cold and wet, but unharmed. I wonder, does that mean that my... I, that must change the condition then, if they're suggesting that. Seems that if I had heavy armor, that the cards for success and failure would be different, making it harder to succeed. This is a really neat game. I've been meaning to play it for like over a year now, but you know how it is. There's so many video games. I've been meaning to play like a hundred different games, Damn it, <laughs> Captain of the guards. I always thought it was best to avoid the problems of others. I see you have no such concerns. I didn't get that token, did I? So did I have to get huge success then? Win this and claim my token. Or maybe the token's waiting for the end of the game. I didn't really pay attention that closely to where the token went, but I thought it just went back in. You hear a shout from up ahead and the sounds of battle. Racing forwards, you discover a warrior surrounded by undead. Two of skulls. More skeletons for you to deal with. That's what it meant, is there's three Two of Skull cards in the deck. Well, it's a good thing I have a holy weapon, right? It's a lump of iron on a stick. Not terribly subtle. And he said, Stranger, he calls out, he throws his weapon to you. Here, something, end of these monstrosities. I didn't see that the, ch the text changed at first. So he gave me a mace, 27 damage. Holy. Less good than my current weapon, though. Yeah, I have a 32 damage holy that does even more damage when I lose my health, so it's all around better. So let's sell the new one. Yay! Supplies and gold.
looks mighty dark around here. Ah, he puts his little mask on. That's neat. That's what. That's cool watching him get equipped each time. It's murder time! Bring in the pain! Well. Oh, <laughs> I punched his head off. That's kind of great. The, the combat's definitely a little swimmy. Good work putting them to rest. Keep the mace. We have enough back at Kader. Or Kadir, he says, slowly standing. We've been hearing reports of undead in our kingdom recently, and I came to investigate. He stops to look around at all the bone fragments. More of them here than I suspected. Some new horror must have decided to settle in these parts and brought its minions. I must head back to the capital and report this to the Duke. Watch your step, friend. There is something more powerful at work than just these skeletons. The card's token is now yours. Yay! The token is yours. Well done. I like I like to earn things. Makes me happy. Hey, it's his purple shop. In a shady grove off the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Greetings, wise traveler. We have four gold. <laughs> so I take it these weapons I'm selling aren't selling for much then, huh? How do I only have four gold? Why do I, why do I only have four gold? Yeah, these, this sells for 12, 8, 8. I can sell my starting helm, that's interesting. Uh... Does the Nomad's auto-sell of items sell it for crappy amounts of money? Because that wasn't part of the description, necessarily. I don't know, I find myself once again not having the money I need. Oh! That's shield 7 gold. Still can't afford that, but it's lower than I've seen. Mercenary contract. Once per battle, press right bumper to activate an aura that makes every successful strike drop gold. Oh. I thought I would summon a mercenary. <laughs> it's usually what mercenary contracts are. Chains of Rage. Defense medium. During combat strikes sustained with bows and wands, I have a chance to restore your cooldowns. Healing cap. Any healing is doubled. I can't afford any of these. Why do I only have four gold? I must be misinterpreting something about this game, right? Oh well. On with my life. Yeah, maybe the nomad sells things for crap. I kind of want to try the lion guy. Because I wanted the. Uh, I like the idea of. Uh, buffing your health over the course of the dungeon, especially since the early encounters so far have been easy and it probably gets harder over time because you're building up to a boss fight each time, so having your character progression reflect the progression of the individual dungeon would be kind of cool and sort of a, what was it called, a, ha a half minute hero, for example. It was a game where you start every mission as level one, you have to grind to whatever level to beat the boss, but it was all like rapid fire crazy uh, meta microcosms thing going on stuff. <laughs> Were you hoping this was the end? No. Another floor awaits. This is the end. You embark upon the next leg of your adventure. Good. Now all you need to do is find and kill the Jack of Skulls and we can progress. This is, this is definitely a hallway-based dungeon. It's, all, it's just a linear progression right now. But I'm sure it won't always be. Dead King's Hall. Greed. If it were not for greed, then who would play at this game? A challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. You see an ancient ornate coffin in the main burial chamber. It may hold spectacular wealth, but it will surely be guarded. Draw two monster cards. Two monster cards. Let's get them. Oh, ho, 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 Your options are huge success and failure, and no in between, and it's 50 50. Second from the left! Yay! Am I just gonna do the same card the entire game? I don't think there's any reason not to necessarily, because you can't, you can't tell which one's which. Suddenly, you leap into the fray, taking one of them down before they can even react. Still, that's probably. Oh, do I pick one? 
Oh, I discard one of them. We'll discard the dust, because I have a bonus against undead. I assume dust is bandits, since that was last deck. Nomadic desert bandits or something. Here we go. That's always fun to watch. Even if the animation itself can be longer than the entire combat encounter. Oh, this is a cool looking setting. You missed me! I like how they slow-mo in on one individual moving piece. Dealer draws you three gain cards. The card's token is now yours. Draw one equipment. Neat. Chains of Rage. An excellent way to turn an injury into an asset. So, bows and wands can restore cooldowns. I don't have cooldowns to recharge it to recharge yet, but maybe it does have maybe it has more defense than my current one, at least. Defense light and medium. So yeah, sell old. Armor protects you from damage. The best armor, of course, does so much more. So I think I'm selling my equipment for food instead of gold. That's good for not starving, I guess, but uh when I, when I picked this character, I, I must have misinterpreted that as thinking that I was going to get gold for my equipment I was selling. Which is not the case. We have five food. Yay! Twenty gold! I've never had this much money before! It's still not enough to buy most of the things I've seen, though. <laughs> Traveling Tinker. A merchant, conveniently. In a shady grove off the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventures. Greetings, wise traveler. I have much to offer you. I have, bleh, I have much to offer you. I think they might have the same dialogue. In general, all the different merchants. I like all the little card animations. I might start skipping them eventually just because they are a little long. But right now, they're still endearing. Chains of Rage is worth six, is 14 and 16 and 8. So the stuff on me is valuable, supposedly. Don't need to buy food right now. And I can't afford anything. Although I could sell... I could s No, I probably couldn't, actually. I was thinking I could sell something to get the equipment slot. But, like, this is not a slot, right? This is just a thing you can get. So this one's the only one that's an equipment slot. It's a healing cap. Costs 35. But I'd have to sell my helm to get it. And my helm's only worth 10, so that'd be 20, 20, it'd be 34, so it'd be short one. And I don't want to take off any of my equipment. So, once again, I'm not doing anything here. I don't think even buying food is necessary. Maybe I'll get lucky and have a gold-based encounter soon. Or it'll just end. <laughs> Next, a winding trail. An ambush. Hardly fair, is it? Suddenly a tree falls across your path, blocking the new way ahead- uh, blocking the way ahead. Dealer draws one monster card. Two of dust. I give them all my gold or attack the cowardly band for daring to threaten you. You shout a battle cry and raise your weapon. The battle begins. Come get it, bandits. There's so many cards buffing up how ridiculously equipped my character is, and then they're, they're just like, We're bandits, we don't have shirts, we're gonna get you. <laughs> Should really try wearing shirts. I don't even have to counter if I just go back and forth between you guys a lot. Die faster. I there we go. You were such a fearsome adversary. I will bear that in mind. I presume it'll get more difficult at some point. <laughs> Cause right now they're just little packs of two. You search the bodies for loot. You get three game cards. Wow. We got an armory equipment. Shield, it's garbage. I cannot expect you to get by without some protection. It's clearly garbage. Sell new. Yeah, so we do. We definitely get food then. 
three more food. Oh goodness, I'll never starve again. Oh yeah, apparently. Maybe I should start selling food. <laughs> I don't think I don't think you can. Okay, much more combat heavy. Bandits are displeased with your challenges. Is that so? They're displeased. A group of bandits suddenly attacks. The King of Dust isn't happy about you killing his men. We killed the King of Dust. <laughs> so he shouldn't be happy that he's dead. Ah, three of dust. Now there's three. Completely different. Ab uh, absolutely. Where are we? How'd you ambush me here? In an underground dungeon? Oh wait, no, it looks like... I think I can see the desert outside. So like this is just a little bit of cover. Oh, yeah, never mind. We're in the desert. <laughs> I thought we were in an underground dungeon because it was so dark. Just gotta watch out for any red showing up. But I don't think that any of the normal enemies have access to that yet. How you feeling, buddy? A little harmed? You'll be fine. There we go. The ragdoll's funny. <laughs> Among the bodies, you find a scrap of parchment with a rough description of you, plus an offer of a reward from the King of Dust. Dealer draws one gain card. Three food! I have so much food! Now I feel a little silly for asking for it for my boon. So this is probably the boss fight right here. Or it's stairs. The Jack of the Skulls. Of all the players in the game, these are the most dangerous in the world, yet in no natural form. A wrongness. An error. Cheating. This tenacious undead is unusually difficult to lay to rest. In addition to sheer strength, the skeleton has the power to revive recently defeated skeletons in its close vicinity. Unless you have a holy weapon! Serving as captains to squads of lesser skeletons, these unholy abominations strike fear into the hearts of all warm-blooded folk. For until this fiend is defeated, their legions are, effectively, endless. Alright, so he's tough, but he has no special abilities that I have to worry about, because he can't revive when I use my weapon, I believe. And, uh, no mention of unblockables. We play for a token now. Despite not mentioning it, though, I'll keep an eye out just in case, because maybe he still has unblockables. The four of skulls. That's only. That's not too many. That's four enemies. And the big one. Well, that's rather dark in here. Oh, never mind. I always think it's going to be dark. And that's... Shots from rifles cannot be deflected. You would do better to avoid them. Are you agile enough? Oh, there's a gun guy. Watch out. Yeah. Oh. Watch out. Oh! There's a, there's a red attack. I should take out their gun guys if I can. Oh, is he reviving him? He is. So he still can, regardless. So basically, he doesn't give a crap about my holy, ver my holy thing that's supposed to be anti-revive. Oh, is he down? Watch out. Hey, you gun guy. I think I took out your leader already. What's that? Ah, well done. Well done indeed. But you have roused the dead in their dusty tombs, and even I cannot say what will come of it. Now our wager becomes more interesting. Will the tools you've earned suffice to address the challenges I pose? That is the question, is it not? Have I unlocked some kind of harder mode? Is that what you're proposing with this creepy symbol? 
Also, are those all tokens of unlocks I did? I assume the golds are the ones that were achieved by the ones on my deck, but... I don't even know what the other ones mean. Are they just for beating this hand in general? The Murder at Sea DLC has arrived. Visit the landlocked lover to begin the quest. <laughs> right, there's more DLC to worry about. The landlocked lover. That must that must be added to the thing, right? Let's see. What do you mean? The hunt for the white minotaur has begun. Song of the White Minotaur. The White Council's expanding its influence. Whatever these things mean. <laughs> the Goblin King's Halls DLC is ready. They've had a lot of time to expand this game. Hey, look, it's our friend. <laughs> he may not be so friendly when I go after him. Uh, I, this is probably the ideal time to play this game. They're working on the sequel, so they're probably done adding to it, so I get to have the full experience. That looks very Stark-like. The Underworld awaits your sacrifice. So that's why there's a bunch of weird colored tokens, is those are all probably expansions of DLC that all unlock after you beat the second dungeon. Indecent Arrival. Whereas these next four tokens are probably my, un my uh, unlocks I earned. Two from cards, and then two from the final boss. For helping the captain of the guards, you receive... A mace. A mace. Woot. Is the mace always holy? Exploring the, For exploring the Dead King's Hall, you receive... Treasure chest! And as a reward for defeating the Skeleton Jack, you receive these new cards. The Crucible, the Queen of Dust, Helpful Priest, and Desert Storm. Oh. So on top of a uh, King of Dust, there's a Queen of Dust. Interesting. They all have tokens on them for using them in, in, uh, in decks. As a reward for defeating Skeleton Jack, you receive these new cards. Helm of Reflection. Consuming Shame. Angel's Wing. Frostfang. Shall we deal again? Watching the cards move around can be mesmerizing in this game. 